about um, the value of your guests. So I think it is a bit connected to data, maybe to AI. Uh, I think you can learn a lot and it's worth to stick around. And um, just to put up the pressure, last year we had the speaker on stage and he was one of the best rated sessions. Everyone loved him. So I can tell you, if you stick with us, you will love it. Um, the session is a sponsored slot, so we have some uh, great supporters of this convention, as this is important to make this happen. We have 400 speakers, we have four stages, 17 tracks, so we need some support. So we, um, we say thank you to Revinate for sponsoring the next session. I will give it a moment to everyone sit and change the room. And while I do it, I point out once again that you can share on social media with the hashtag ITB Berlin Convention. We will be here in this room until 6 o'clock today, only talking about hotel technology, with great speakers coming along. There's the water. Well, I think it looks like we can get it started. So, powered by Revinate, welcome with me on stage from the Revinate team, all the way from Amsterdam. We have Daya Zubotka and Dylan Cole from the team. Thank you so much for joining me. Daria, your director of customer success, so you know your customer. Right, and Dylan, yep. Dylan you know Cole, you're the director of sales in Mayer, so yep. the two of you, you will amaze this crowd now and tell we'll us about best. how to unlock the value of your guests. I wish Absolutely. you so much fun and the stage is yours. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. All right. Sorry if the mic is a little loud. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our session, Unlocking the True Value of Your Guests. We are extremely excited to be here today with you at ITB stage. And today we're going to talk about some more about current industry trends, um, growing importance of zero and first party data, also some challenges and opportunities this type of data presents. And we're going to wrap up with some exciting hotel campaign examples that are following the trends. So with that, a quick introduction. Um, I'm Daria Subotka, I'm Director of Customer Success of EMEA at Revenate. I'm very passionate about travel and hospitality industry, probably a big surprise for everybody in the room. I've been working in travel since 2010, many different positions in travel agencies, first in Europe, then I moved to the States where I worked very closely with hoteliers in OTAs, in marketing, and then finally I find myself in hospitality technology with Revenate. So, with Revenate, I've been for the last seven years working very closely with our hotel customers, first in North America. And uh, lately, when I moved to Amsterdam with our EMEA top brands, we helped them with direct revenue strategy, marketing strategy, and um, their guest communication. So that yeah. to you, Dylan. Thank you. Um, so my name is Dylan Cole, and uh, I see some of our customers out there in the audience. And uh, this is my boss, by the way, director of customer success. I got to bring the right business to her or she'll hurt me. But anyway, that's right. yeah, that's right. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I started my travel career as a TV personality in South Korea for three years. That is a true story. And I was in a K-pop video. I bring this up just to give myself a little notoriety every once in a while. But if you have any questions about that, come see me. I'll show you the videos for proof. But I've been with Revenate since 2012. I started in our New York office. I uh, worked selling our products in North America. I moved to APAC in Singapore uh, to, in 2020, uh, worked with clients in Australia uh, and throughout Asia. And then now I'm based here uh, in the Netherlands, uh, working with clients in Europe and uh, having a great time working with the biggest hotel uh, market in the world. Thank you. On to the trends. Continue on the same topic as was on a panel just before. So the first trend that we want to highlight is from McKinsey, and that's the reinvention of loyalty. Everybody probably very familiar with that. Actually, the 2023 McKinsey survey of travelers uh, and loyalty memberships revealed that loyalty members are not so loyal anymore. Actually, from three to uh, travelers are actually members of three to four different loyalty member system right now, and in transaction with about three different hotel brands per year. So hoteliers have to adapt to this. And what they do instead, they provide those personalization, guest experience that are unique, and also instant rewards, right? Not the points-based systems. Next trend is from Deloitte. And this trend highlights the shift in technology. Again, echoes with the first trend. Businesses are now 
uh, invest in more in a technology that supports that data, guest data that helps them to leverage personalization, first of all. And the second trend that identified by Deloitte as well echoes with the first one that they say travelers choose their own adventure. Again, those unique experiences, do-it-yourself experiences, guests choose their own adventure. And the last one that I'm sure a lot of revenue and commercial leaders in the room will agree to, and it's the growing impact of the Trev Bar. So not the Rev Bar, but Trev Bar. Hotel revenue managers prioritize auxiliary revenues. It helps them to drive more margins to drive this profitability. We're going to circle back to those trends throughout the presentation as we're going to show you how some hoteliers actually already implement in those trends. So Dylan? Got to get that Trev Bar up. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about uh, first party data. I'm sure everybody's a little bit sick of this topic, if I'm honest, right? <laughs> we see it every day you wake up, first party data this, first party data that, somebody's posting about it on LinkedIn, uh, but it doesn't make it not important. In fact, it's more important than ever. And here's some trends we're seeing as to why first party data is important. Uh, first of all, I was here last year presenting and I said Google was gonna take cookies away. They still didn't do it. Uh, this year's the year. I promise maybe. they're going to do it this year. Yeah, maybe it's going to be this year, but eventually the cookies will go away. They're going to take our cookies, and you're going to have to have a first-party data strategy to be able to compete. Uh, the second thing, clicker, thank you, is uh, Sojourn, a uh, very reputable company we all know, conduct study. They say 81% of uh, businesses, or excuse me, hoteliers that have implemented first-party data strategies have seen an uplift in direct revenue or revenue. And I would imagine a lot of you who have implemented these strategies can, uh, can relate and say the same. And then finally, EU data protection uh, fines hit an all-time high in 2023. So one of the ways to protect yourself against these fines and making sure you're compliant is through a first-party data strategy. All right, so let's talk about the original party data. She told me that wouldn't get a laugh. I knew, but I did it anyway. Uh, let's talk about zero-party data, right? Zero-party data, for those of you who are not familiar with it, zero-party data is data that you have to basically ask guests for, and they willingly submit themselves. So it would be things like preferences, polls, surveys. So they fill this in, they hit submit, and they give it to you. Um, First-party data is another form of data that you should be thinking about as it can really help you uh, in your data strategy and overall uh, customer experience strategy through technology. So, on let's, to you. <laughs> let's take a look at some sources of zero and first party data. As I work a lot of with, with hoteliers, I know that uh, collecting guest data is quite challenging. So one way to think about where and what data to collect is to map it to the stages of the guest journey. And that's what you can see here on the screen. Uh, this approach is not only good for data collection, but also really good for your thinking of your communication strategy, your revenue strategy. But let's take a look at the data collection. So the first stage, inspiration, that's when the guests are excited about their trip, they're researching online, they're doing that web browsing, right? So this is when hoteliers collecting website browsing data, email and web, uh, website exit pop-up information, guests attempting the booking, so very important to have your card abandonment, um, also implemented at that stage so you can collect those emails and bounce back with the bookings and of course phone inquiries. The next is booking stage, right? That's when hoteliers traditionally collect reservation and profile PMS data and also reservation call data if they're using the voice channel, right? And the pre-arrival and on-property stage, that's probably the most important stage for the hotelier. That's when they can collect zero-party data. Again, they can ask about the guest preferences, what upsells the guests are interested to, also on-site surveys, see if they can um, find out anything from the guests that they're willing to provide themselves. And then the last stage, post day, and that's uh, when hoteliers convert those guests to become loyal repeat guests, right? That's also a data collection opportunity with those reviews and post day surveys, trip uh, anniversary, we miss you campaigns, and of course, email newsletters. So now that we know about different ways to collect the data, how do hoteliers activate the data, Dylan? I thought you would never ask. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's very easy to do. Just kidding, it's not easy at all. So hoteliers have a lot of problems when it comes to data, right? 
Uh, we've seen this time and time again. You have issues like siloed data. We're all here in this. This is a common topic here to, these days, siloed data. So you have data in a PMS. You have data in F&B systems, spa systems, golf systems. You name it. It's in different places, but it's all valuable, and it's, it's sitting in different spots. Uh, we often see a lot of hotel groups that have different PMSs throughout the portfolio. Uh, that creates its own challenges. And then, of course, you have formatting issues. You have front desk agents who are quickly trying to check guests in, so they miss the opportunity to format the data appropriately uh, for uh, the marketing team. Yeah. But that's, uh, we're going to talk about something here called the CDP, or the Customer, customer Data Platform. So a customer data platform um, the idea with that is you're able to collect large amounts of data, you're able to analyze that data, and then activate it on your uh, most effective channels. So the first stage of uh, the customer data platform is the collection phase. And as Dasha mentioned, you might want to outline your guest journey and think about all the places you can collect data. So from the uh, PMS, folio data, spa, or golf, the next stage uh, of the customer data platform is to unify that data. So you want to bring it together and you got to make sure that your CDP is able to synthesize that data, clean it up, and put it in a format that's usable uh, for your marketing efforts. And the next, uh, the next piece here, and just kind of tying back to these trends about EU imposing larger fines and hotels needing to make sure that things, uh, make sure that data is secure. Um, is the storage component. So a CDP needs to be able to store that data in a safe and compliant way. Uh, let's move on to targeting. So guests expect a customized experience while on property. They expect the same thing when they're receiving your communications, uh, whether it's marketing or informational um, communications. But the idea of targeting is you can create different segments and approach guests with the right message. And then finally, the activation phase, right? So you've done all these great things to collect it, unify it, store it, um, and, and target, but then you gotta be able to activate it on the right channels like email, voice, message, uh, or other channels that you might prefer. And then this is a great photo op, not of us, but of the slide. Uh, we often see a lot of folks wanting to take this picture, but it's the guest journey. Um, you might recognize a lot of these um, touch points uh, but Dasha touched on these for collection, but they're also, these are your activation stages. So you see things like a birthday email at the inspiration stage, or, an, or a pre-arrival text message for guests, or on-property text message requests, and then also in the post-day phase, things like surveys, where again, that's zero-party data you could be collecting for future uh, usage. Right, now on to the fun part. Let's take a look at some exciting customer campaign examples that show us how do they activate all that data. But first, a quick circle back to the trends, as I promised. First one, loyalty. We remember that loyalty is not really about the points or stays. It is about that personalization. So let's take a look how some of our hotel customers are doing that. You might have heard of this loyalty. That's Loyalty, but not really loyalty. It's actually a membership program launched by Anysmore last year. I love this. It's amazing. You actually have to pay, purchase to get to this program. But what it gets the guests is the access to those amazing exclusive offers that they offer. Some of the benefits to list, everybody gets 50% off uh, of any new hotel of any small brand. You get 20% off of every hotel you stay for the first time across any small and also my favorite that's not here on the screen is 365 coffees a year. So any, any small property, bar, restaurant, hotel, you show up and get your free barista made coffee. So I think it's an amazing example of that personalization, guest experience first versus points, right? So different way of thinking, different mentality. This is an example of Hoxton Hotels, which is a part of any small, of course, and that's how they executed their disloyalty promotion. So they took their first and zero party data, so PMS data, website, email sign up data, and they promoted the disloyalty across all of their portfolio, shared that database between their portfolio. And they also did it across digital, social, and uh, email marketing, right? What they're doing furthermore with Revenate, they're using that uh, hyper-targeting that uh, Dylan was just talking about, and they actually segment their database and send the offers based on guest location, language, booking history spend, 
uh, also email engagement. If uh, the member didn't like the offer, didn't engage with it, they would send something else differently. So very smart way of doing loyalty or disloyalty per se. This is um, also how Hoxton Hotels and its more uh, group are increasing direct share uh, with their strategy. So what they do, they send welcome emails to everybody that sign up to membership program, sign up to their website newsletter, and send them automated campaigns listing the membership and the book and direct uh, benefits. What they also do, they send an automatic cancellation recovery. So if the booking abandoned, canceled, right? So they bounce back with the offer. It doesn't matter which channel the booking came from. They will list those to the right um, book direct um, benefits. And also they do OTA win back campaign, trip tease integration, and of course the membership list direct uh, booking benefits. Yeah. So very smart direct booking strategy. Um, going back to the trends, next one is personalization. So let's see examples here. I know, Dylan, you're very passionate about it, so I'll pass it on to you. Yeah, I love this one because it's got whiskey in it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, or whiskey in the middle. Whiskey in the middle. But uh, this is one of our customers that Dasha and I both work with during our time in, in North America. So this is the Mission Bay Resort, and they offer experiences on their website. They work with a third party called Way, and customers can choose or guests can choose uh, different experiences before they arrive. And the thing they've done is they've set up through our contact list API. Uh, they've been able to bring in those uh, experiences as guests book them. So then the marketing team has access to that information about what experiences those guests had booked. So what they're doing with that um, is really cool. So you'll notice in the GIF up there that they're showing a comedy show. So one of the things guests can book is a comedy show. So then what they've done is they go back out to everybody who's booked a comedy show through that uh, experience portal, and then they market um, the different lineups every week of those comedy shows they're doing on property. And so you can see the, the conversion, the open rates are, are very good for them. And the last trend that I spoke about is um, the traff bar, right? So hotel revenue managers are prioritizing that auxiliary revenue to drive more profitability. So I wanted to share a few examples of how our hotel customers are actually driving that auxiliary revenue. And before that, I love this visual. You can see this guest, Angela, on the left, right? And she has 45 stays, 45 nights at the hotel. So her room night value is 20,000 euros, right? But also we know, and the hotel knows, because they integrate all their systems, that Angela loves spa, F&B, and golf. And she spends quite a lot of money there. So the true lifetime value of Angela is actually 26,000 euros. Why I'm talking about it is because this type of data and this type of leverage in the data helps hoteliers to target that specific type of guest that will spend more money on different services and also brings the hotel the true um, ROI, return on investment, right? So here's an example I was talking about. So this is a spa offer driving uh, spa bookings for this group, Alexander Hotels in the UK. Why I love it so much is because the offer actually lists the treatments of, uh, ho sorry, offers a day um, at spa, which also helps them to drive um, hotel bookings, right? So this promotion actually drove one to two night stays. Also, Alexander Hotels segmented it very smartly. So they send this promotion to previous spa guests, but also to hotel guests that are local, that live 20 kilometers away from the spa. Uh, as you can see, the results are great. It's 51% open rate, 3.2% click-through rate. As you know, 2.0 uh, 2 is average click-through rate today. And this example, my final example, is from Landmark Hotels. This is an amazing uh, leading hotel of the world property. They actually take their guest experience very seriously. And this is the offer of F&B, where they promote stay and bake offer, again, a combination of auxiliary revenue driving and of that um, room, room nights as well. So again, you can see 50% open rate, 2% click-through rate, way above the average, very successful campaign from Landmark. Yeah. With that? Yeah, that's great. So we'll wrap it up here. Um, hopefully you folks enjoyed what we, we presented here. But one of the things we wanted to share with you is we produced a benchmark report um, earlier this year. Uh, actually just a few weeks ago. And oftentimes hoteliers ask us, hey, we know how we're doing at our property, but how are we doing 
against other hoteliers globally or in EMEA specifically. And so some of the things, um, we, by the way, we've analyzed over 12,000 um, hoteliers across uh, our customer base to get this information. But some of the things we, we were able to pull out of it that we thought worth sharing with you were that 27% uh, is the average database size increase we saw across our customer base last year. Uh, we also saw that 59% of hoteliers are doing uh, upsells uh, in their pre-arrival communications, and that 17% is the average uh, conversion rate on uh, shopping cart abandonment campaigns. And uh, we'd like to invite you to download this guide if you'd like um, to see how your properties or group is doing uh, against uh, hotels globally. We'll give you a second to look at that. Um, and then with that said... Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. We're going to wrap up with this. Well, and myself, you can find us at stand, uh, Hall 8.1, Stand 117. Grab us if you want to talk about guest data or if you want to ask Dylan about his career television career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I hope you, you enjoy your time here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dylan Cole and Dario Zubotka from Revinade. Again, it was a pleasure to have you. And we Thank see you at us. your booth. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.